esteemed audience welcome to the home of debates this is the great debaters contest glad to see you i am your host esperancia kapanga and i am chris boru the bone of contention between our intellectual teams today is the government should limit companies ability to replace workers with technology in the proposition we have wareng high school and in the opposition we have our defending champions nationally for season 8 kapsabet boys high school Proposal number 1 you have 3 minutes to make your submissions. Thank you. The government should limit the company's ability to replace workers with technology. Underline the word limit. To limit is to prevent or to stop something from increasing beyond a certain level and more so the optimum level. Government is a body having authority over having authority to direct policies or public affairs of a nation or an institution. Technology This is the use of scientific knowledge in a practical way. I'm Joshua Weshuli, Wareng High School, strongly proposing the motion. This is because if the government is to, if the government does not limit company's ability to replace workers with technology, and the companies continue replacing the workers with this technology, it will lead to decrease in employment opportunities, hence increase in unemployment rate. In Kenya, Many people have been forced to joblessness. Take for example in banking alone. Over 3000 people have been rendered jobless. That's because of the bank's advancement to new technology. We have the bank tell us who are replaced by the ATMs. Our SDG number 8. It says good jobs and economic growth. And as you see good jobs comes before economic growth to mean we must make sure first that these people have good jobs for them for we to be able to have this economic growth secondly poverty comes as a daughter of unemployment citizens if they are unable to acquire basic things in life such as food it leads them to hunger how will we say that we are developing our society our sdg number 1 says no poverty sdg number 2 says zero hunger how will we get to achieve that if the companies are continue replacing workers with technology rendering them jobless and making them poor in chernobyl belarus in the year 1877 when sokenberg industry was replacing workers with technology over 15000 workers were replaced over a period of one year and nbc statistics says that after two years there was great increase of unemployment and people who are living below the poverty line increased from 10.1% to 40%. Necessity is a matter of invention. Or so they say, if people lack these basic needs, they lack because of unemployment, what next will people do? Social crimes such as theft come in. Surely, for successful technology, reality must take precedence over public affairs for nature cannot be fooled thirdly though as africans we need to industrialize yes according to our sdg number 9 that is industry innovation and infrastructure but sdg number 17 partnership for the goals it means that we need to partner together for we to be able to industrialize africa for if companies replace workers with technology rendering them jobless even if the companies or technology increases productivity will not be able to acquire those products being produced in very large amounts thank you as my fellow will finish on that pastor kosa you have 3 minutes to make your statement bill gates says that automation applied to an efficient operation will magnify magnify the efficiency And that is why in agreement with Bill Gates, Kogo Victor Simoa from Kapsabet High School stand here to strongly oppose the motion that states the government should limit the company's ability to replace workers with technology. Well, what is to limit? What is to limit? To limit is to stop something from increasing beyond a particular level. What is an ability? What is ability? Well, ability is a free will to do something. When we look at what is replacing, when we say somebody has re- what is to replace? Replacing is to be used instead of use instead of. 
Now, what is technology in this context? Technology refers to the machinery or equipment used in production. Well, I want us to take a trip to Asia. I want us to go to Japan. I want us to look at the Toyota production system. Well, in the year 2014, Toyota produced 3,270,000 cars in one year, which comes to an average of about 13,400 cars per day. Where on earth? Where on earth? Is there a company where it only depends on workforce, human labor, where they can produce 13,400 cars in one day within 24 hours? Not very far from Japan, I want us to go to China, where a Chinese company, where Changying Precision Technology Company, replaced 90%, 90%, percent of its human labor with machines. And within a span of less than one year, there was a staggering increase of over 250 percent in productivity. And you know what? There was 80 percent drop in the defects. So it does not need rocket science to see that automation of production leads to increased output Somebody will argue that technology automation will lead to loss of jobs. Let us call to mind the fact that a report by BBC on Talking Business Africa by Lerato Mbele, dated 13th of June 2014, says that according to the Swiss think tank, robots are going to replace 75 million jobs by 2022. But you know what? They are going to create more jobs, 133 million jobs by 2022. That is close to doubling the jobs that are available. So what, how much persuasion do we need to see the sense? Need I say more? I believe I should. Second proposer, you have three minutes for rebuttal. Nelson Mandela said, if you want to speak to people and for them to understand you, then use a language that they will understand. Now, will they understand you if you're rendering them jobless? No, I don't think so. Now, the first opposer said, well, that they're going to create jobs. How? Now, they produce vehicles, that is true, but allow me to ask him, how is the common man Ainchi going to acquire this vehicle and yet he is rendered unemployment? The money that he was to get in order to buy the vehicle, he doesn't get because technology has replaced him. Once again, we are saying limit. We have not displaced, displaced technology. We are only limiting it. That in a company, there should be a certain percentage that is for the human resource and of the technology. That in essence, technology should work hand in hand with human resource, not to replace them. Technology should be there to, to assist us as human beings, but not to hurt us. Now, according to Kenya, Bureau of Statistics shows that a total of 7 million Kenyans are unemployed. And out of 7 million, 1.4 Kenyans are looking for jobs but have not yet gotten it. Now, Kenya is not a, an industrialized country that is not as other countries. And yet we want to put these people who are in industries already unemployed. When students go to school, they have ambitions to get good jobs in future. Now, if in future, you don't get the jobs. Will the students work hard in order to get those jobs? I don't think so. That's why we said it will increase crime rates. And to acquire these machines, it is very costly in terms of purchasing them and maintaining them. If you argue that these machines will bring in more, will, will bring more effectiveness in work, then why don't you channel the money that is used to acquire these machines to increase the salaries and the allowances of the workers in order to keep on motivating them to continue working hard for the benefit of the country. We say SDG number eight. 
good jobs and economic growth. In order for there to be economic growth, they need, the companies have to grow and individuals also need to grow. But if we want to benefit the, can, the industries themselves, then we are doing nothing but continuing hurting the common mananchi. Everything you want in life, you should ask yourself, is it hurting me or bringing me benefits? If technology will, be, will come and take and replace our workers and take the job opportunities, in essence that the common mananchi will not have the basic needs. That is the food, clothing, and shelter. And these are the things that we are trying to fight, poverty and hunger. Then let us at least, and allow me to educate you on this, we have not displaced it, we are just, we are just giving it a certain percentage, um, about which I know the percentage that should be there, in, the, sh the higher percentage that should be there is for the human resource. Well, we are all Kenyans and we all feel it. If technology is going to affect us, then let us limit. Anna Nyambura, Waring High School. Second opposer, you have three minutes for rebuttal. My name is Johnson Aboga from Capsulate High School. Uh, the first proposer, Joshua, you say that uh, if the government limits these companies from employing technology instead of human workers, then to lead to job losses. But have you asked yourself how many software engineers that we are employing today in our nation? If you look at the United States in the field of medicine, in terms of surgery, we don't have only just have surgeons. We have robotic surgeons who are controlling robots. So they're also creating jobs as much as they're making people lose jobs. So it's, if you look at integers, positive and negative, they add up to zero. But now the positive on this side is more, I think, because of the statistics. If you look at the US and Kenya, you can be able to realize that what you're saying is quite untrue. Now they showed us this placard for the SDG number 17 of partnership for the goals. Now partnership should apply even to government and companies. When a government comes to a private company to limit whatever it's doing its operations, then they're not partnering. So it's to the detriment of this SDG that you have given us. Now, if you look at the robots that we have today in terms of replacing human workers in technology, we are able to see that robots can be able to work for long hours without getting tired. Hence, the realization of our dream of Vision 2030 is going to be achieved because Kenya is going to be a 24-hour economy where people will not be sleeping, but people will be sleeping, yes, but robots will be doing the job. They come in the morning and they find a job well done. If you look at the example that my first opposer has said, Kogo Victor Simwa, that Japan produced 13,400 13, cars from Toyota, in one day. If we multiply that one by an average cost of a car of around 4 million shillings, it gives you a net of around 9 billion shillings accrued from that one. When a government goes and taxes that company, how much money will they get in tax? Will it be building us or will it be making us to lag behind as a nation? That is also to the realization of the big four agenda. One of the pillars is manufacturing. And manufacturing, if we want to really embrace it, then we don't need to use human technology as such. We need to use these machines so that their efficiency can be improved. I want to be an employer in future and I want to open a company and one of the greatest stresses that I'll have is about pensioning my workers. Now, robots, I know them the way they are made, and we all know them, they cannot retire because they're machines. So will you have to worry as an employer about pensioning your workers? If you look at the business nail in the newspaper of 18th July, that was two days ago, there was a stalemate in the National Treasury of Kenya when the cabinet secretary, uh, Henry Rotich, blocked 385 billion from give, giving us pension to workers under 50 who want to retire. If you take this 385 billion, and maybe you say a quarter is under private companies, and you use that pension in other things apart from uh, giving it to workers because you have robots, that one is enough to give us a thicker superhighway from Kisumu to Kapsabet here, because the cost is 95 billion, and that one will be able to save us much more. Thank you. The proposers have been asked, in as much as they're championing very much to have human resource used in our industries, what are the advantages of having human beings over machines? 
the poses have been asked, where exactly will people go if they are put out of jobs by the machines? Are they looking to phase us out as human beings? <laughs> Proposal number three, you have three minutes to respond. People, people, people. We are not talking about taking it away. We are talking about limiting. This should get into our heads. Of course, without technology, we are doomed. But the motion is to limit, not to take it away. Straight to the question asked by Wanjala. Thank you very much. The question was, why human beings but not machines? Human beings, I'd like to answer you by saying that human beings can brainstorm to produce more quality goods than technology, which standards remain the same. Human beings can, they can brainstorm. This leads to production of high quality goods, creativity and innovation brought by human beings. There's no need of paying taxes and yet in companies, they, they are replacing the people who need to pay taxes with machines. If that person goes home, what, how will that person get money to pay that tax? And yet the government is insisting that he or she should pay taxes. Let's think critically. Think at that, at that perspective. I propose the motion strongly, and the motion is the government should limit companies' ability to replace workers with technology. Yes, it should limit. Why do I say so? Technology leads to human physical disconnection. How? Take, for instance, a company has one machine, one worker. One machine, one worker. That's company A. Company B has one, wash, one machine, 100 workers. Which company will have more physical connection? Of course, company B. We are, all, we are humans. We want something to sympathize with you. Let's take an example. Cameraman, if I ask you, will you, have, will you start laughing with that camera that you're having there? No. It will seem like you're insane. So, let's limit this technology. Friends, you will join me by this, but I want to tell you that Technology, we are the ones who invented it. And if we let it come before us, it will lead us to disgrace, not the victory that we want. Kenya is a second, it's a second world country now. We want to move forward. We want to move a step. Opportunity comes, in our, in, comes once in our, in our lifetime, but we should minimize that opportunity, isn't it? Or will you start just embracing that technology. No, you are, the one, you, are the, you are the person who made that technology. Then, why leave it to overcome you? Why? We have seen the, the, fruits which are, the fruits which are manufactured industrially. Let's take, for example, the GM, GMO food. They bring cancer, isn't it? Then, what is that? And that is why we say that we should limit this technology. I think you have heard that staccato in my voice. I'll repeat again. We should limit this technology. And if we limit this technology, Kenya will be able to move ahead because Kenya is now developing and people are increasing. If you make these people jobless, it will lead to social evils, social crimes, and Kenya will be not a land that we want. I love Kenya. Or is there any person who doesn't love Kenya? By a show of hands, no one. We all love Kenya. So let's embrace this motion and say that government should limit this technology. Thank you very much. Ngase Ben, Wareng High School. Tadapuza, you have three minutes to respond. Um, we have the question, where will people go? Interesting, isn't it? Well, the second opposer clearly explained that with this, according to his think tank, the displacement of jobs will be 75 million globally, but in turn, it will create 133 million jobs opportunity by the time 2022 reaches. Victor Motinda opposing the motion, the government, should, the government should limit companies' ability to replace workers with technology. It's so sad and painful to come across news, newspapers with Headlines, people, miners have, under, have succumbed accidents in these mining industries. Why? Because what the company, the job that they were doing, it was risky. But just think, what if we had machines to do these particular jobs? We are weighing machines versus human lives here. Which is more important? Human lives. So we, when, we, when we balance human workers and technology, 
We are actually going to improve the living standards of people because people live longer, work much fewer hours, and lead generally healthier lives because this replacement of technology, replacement of human workers is technology, is actually going to do the strenuous activities which, have risk, which are risky. Could you be thinking what I'm thinking? Basically, SDG number three. No good health, because these people are going to have good health after we, we reduce the amount, after we introduce the technology, take care of them. Management. Management is easy and due to the central control. When you hear worker, what comes to your mind? Accountability. Well, these machines, they are just going to be honest and they are not going to make up any things. There won't be any need to monitor attendance of workers. Ex you will expect full participation of these machines. Attainment of goals, because when you set these machines, to work, technology, they won't go for breaks, they won't lazy all over around because they have a mission to accomplish whatever programming they've been set onto. Take for instance, according to BT.com, one factory in China which has replaced 90% of its human workers with machines. The manager stated that the results were decrease in defects of the products and increase in production. Just see where we are going with this. And guess what? With this, we are going to promote SDG number eight, decent work and economic growth. And the dad opposed us simply and had a very good question. Who doesn't love Kenya? Basically, we all do. And that's why I'm right here standing that if we incorporate human workers with technology, we are actually looking ahead to a brighter nation, ahead to a brighter and more visionary vision 2030. Victor Mutinda, Kapsevetai. Thank you. Proposition, you have one minute to sum up your argument. A brighter nation with people unemployed and poor. Seven, uh, SDG number 17 says partnership for the goals. To clarify for better understanding to my fellow op opposers, partnership, it is the people partnering with people and not machines partnering with, with machines. Technology should be used to promote the dignity of human beings by creating more employment rather than heavily relying on machines hence rendering them jobless. And innovation and science should not be an end on itself, but should better the life of the people, actually. Once technology rolls over you, if you're not part of the steamroller, you are part of the road. So guys, let us stand and say that the government should limit the company's ability to replace workers with technology. Thank you. Opposition, you have one minute to wrap up your argument. Uh, just to correct you, to check on your concentration level next time, I said a partnership between the government and the managers of these companies. Not on that. Um, I didn't think about machines. We learn to believe that fire is hot only after it has burnt us. And you are misadvisers of the government because you are telling the government to break the egg so that they can see whether the embryo is alive. And that only lead to sure killing of the egg. Why do I say so? Because the countries which you admire in terms of technology, Japan, China, and all of them, they have not limited these companies in terms of replacing workers with technology. But in Kiswahili, wanna, uh, in Kiswahili, we say that Mbona na kirehere. They have done it. Why don't you do whatever they are doing so that we can also reach the same level as they are? We don't want to regress. We want to be in full realization of SDG number nine. That is industry, innovation, and infrastructure. God bless you. The first proposal that was Joshua, you, you, you did your role well as the first speaker. You started off the team very well. You had a logical argument. But at one point, I found you a bit verbose, you know, saying the same thing using different terms. 
Nyambura, that was good. You you started off so well. You did good cross examination. You were eloquent, confident, but midway you became a bit jerky, panicky. But you got composed later on. Uh, ben, you are confident, passionate. You answered the question well. The most outstanding thing is when you strongly defended your issue about the SDG you talked about. And you brought out the issue of human beings being relational, which we cannot find in machines. That was a brilliant way of arguing, and it was a plus on your side. Just two outstanding things, Aboge Johnson. I listened to you, and I thought you were a lawyer in a way. Very, uh, very composed no training, good English, and reference to very open statements that anybody who has not, not even gone through school can listen to you very keenly. Now, Mutinda, if you would have developed on what Johnson and Victor had done, then you could have done a very noble job. But you came in, you began so well, but at one point you became very weak, but good speaker. However, the two teams have given us a good debate. Thank you. In this battle between the creator and his creation, wearing high school, you earned yourself 69%. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Cups a bit high school, you earned yourself 71.2%, making you the winners of this debate. Congratulations to both schools for a job well done. Thank you so much for staying tuned to watch the Great Debaters contest. You know it only gets better, debate after debate. This debate may be over, however, the conversation still continues across our social media platforms with the hashtag GDC for SDGs. Until the next episode, I've been your host, Chris Boru. And I am Esperancia Kapanga. See you next time. <laughs>